They are basically the first thing that incoming class C of Fairfield. Um, they're responsible for, you know, doing icebreakers, helping advise with academics, and um, really just making sure that all the kids feel welcome and someone for them to reach out to as an upperclassman. I wanted to be an orientation leader because I wanted to make um, the incoming classes orientation amazing and I wanted it to be better than mine um, since I didn't have the best orientation. I love my leader but my group was really hard to get to know. So I wanted to become an orientation leader because I wanted to help the incoming freshmen make the transition from high school to college. At the same time I wanted to let them know that about Fairfield and all that it has to offer because I feel that Fairfield for me pretty much started on the day I first came to campus. From the minute I walked into the campus I felt a really good environment, so I just want them to feel the same thing I felt. There are over 40 orientation leaders this year on T15 between student OLs, parent OLs, and international OLs, and each have their own reason of why they want to lead. And like any good team, there are those captains who lead the pack, or in this case, the orientation coach hitters. Uh, my name is Amanda Urena. I'm a junior and I'm a co-chair. <laughs> my name is Renise. I'm a junior. I am a co-chair of orientation. I'm Greg Jensen. I'm also a co-chair for orientation. Um, we set the tone for the Team 15 in this case. Um, make sure that we have a good dynamic so that that flows on to the orientation leaders and that will flow on to the OST. So we just basically about making sure they're bonding, training them well, making sure they're prepared to be orientation leaders, to interact with their groups, that kind of thing. They've been doing a pretty good job. I can't complain. So the process for an orientation leader getting picked, um, they send in their application, which um, they have to write essays, short answers, fill out some information. Um, we do a GPA check on them and a um, judicial check on them before interviews even begin. Then the interview process begins after we've read through their application once. After we've gone through all of the interviews, which was um, about 85 interviews this year, not including returners, um, we uh, read through all the applications again and all of our notes that come with the, each interview. And then basically lock ourselves in a room for <laughs> two to three hours and just go through each person. and read through their file one more time. Once they're selected, they're given their contract. If they choose to accept, they hand their contract back in. And training begins um, in March. And we had three or four training sessions, and those are on Friday afternoons till about six. And um, we're done with our training sessions now until they come back for June, and then there'll be a few more. And then they are thrown right into the incoming class of 2015. But all that rigorous training definitely pays off when the freshmen come in the summer. For two sessions in a matter of four days, it is non-stop fun for both leaders and incoming students alike. that orientation leaders go through during um, orientation are mainly just the students that don't want to be there or the students that want to be there but they want to be with their best friend who's in a different group. In terms of people that I couldn't control, there weren't necessarily two cool Tommies but there were some clicky Clarissas that would basically hang out with them, their like, group of three the entire time. We have a ton of alliterations like my two cool Tommy, texting Tammy, clicky Clarissa's. But that's nothing an OL can't handle. Over those four months of training, leaders learn how to deal with those out of the loop students and provide them with the info that will be helpful to their college experience. Of course, those skills are learned in a fun manner as well. Um, we 
have an overnight retreat each year for the orientation leaders, um, which really is the bonding moment, I would say, for the orientation leaders. Um, and that is also another huge um, component of the training. We did a lot of social justice um, issues, and we do a lot of bonding and trust time during that, um, such as a nature walk with your partner blindfolded, mm -hmm. and you're not able to talk or touch your partner. So it's um, creativity is really needed for an orientation leader, but it's a good process. And of course, no team building would be complete without some sweet dance moves. The skits are one of the funnest parts, I think, about orientation. The skits, for me, you know, gave me an opportunity to, to sing. Actually, as I sang, it was really funny, you know, and just pretty much got to, sh got to show them that you know, we're not embarrassed out here, we're here for them, we're here to have a great time. You know, and just working with the other OL members just gave me another, you know, set of people that I know are my friends here on campus now. The skits for orientation happen on the first night of each orientation session. And those are usually made up by the chairs of orientation, but also with the input of some orientation leaders. And they're basically a fun way to get messages across, whether it's alcohol, drug awareness, or the four Jesuit values. Leadership skills, group bonding, and icebreakers are all part of the core training for Team 15. Some of it is tough, but it creates chemistry and friendships that prepare them for orientation and last a lifetime. Who are they? They're Team 15. Mighty, 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 mighty.